Social media has become a big part of everyday life. Many use it for good, but many also use it to spread things like misinformation, fake news, immorality, and the like. How can you tell when something on social media is actually bad for you? And is it even that big of a deal? Stick around and let's find out. Welcome to Vantage Point, a new show brought to you by the Iglesia Ni Cristo Church of Christ. And we're broadcasting from our INC Media Services satellite office here in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Joining me on the show are Natalie Fitzpatrick and J.R. Dongolin. J.R. Natalie, how's it going? Hi, Brother Famlar. Hey, J.R., how's it going? I'm doing well. Good to see you both again. So getting right to it. According to a blog entitled The Seven Different Types of Social Media, published on Biteable, these are the types of different social media platforms. Social networks, social review, image sharing, video hosting, community blogs, discussion sites, and sharing economy networks. Now on the seven that were mentioned, I'm on three. How about you guys? I, I, I'm pretty sure I'm on all of them. I think I'm on five of them, but definitely not all. Well, compared to the both of you, it looks like I have some catching up to do. But anyway, here now is the focus. On a scale of one to 10, how careful are you when using social media? So one would be like, not too concerned about who's posting. As long as it's entertaining, I'll read it, I'll watch it, I'll consume it. And 10 would be, I'm always fact-checking. I'm selective when it comes to opinionated content. Uh, that's a tough one. I'd say I'm probably around, I don't know, I want to say I'm careful, but I'm not that careful. I don't take social media that seriously. So I'll say six. Um, I spend a lot of time on entertainment content. So tutorials, DIY hacks, just fun videos, stuff like that. But when it comes to news, I'm definitely a lot more careful so if I see a headline um, on Facebook, for example, or in my news feed somewhere, I will definitely look into the article and not just take it for face value. Um, and I'll compare that with cited sources. While we're on the topic, um, here's some wild info about misinformation and false news uh, from an article by MIT. They say that false rumors spread faster and wider than true information. Falsehoods are in fact 70% more likely to be retweeted on Twitter than the truth and reach their first 1,500 people six times faster. Can you believe that? It's mind-blowing, right? But I don't know. What about you, JR? What would you say on a scale of 1 to 10? Uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, I think I'm on 8. Like, I think most of the time, like, I'm reading, watching, or, like, consuming content that's, like, fun and enjoyable. Um, most of the time, it has to be something that I laugh at. Uh, but... I don't know. I'd like to think I have a pretty good sense for like inaccurate content. Like you mentioned, like, you know, fact checking and knowing these sources, you know, obviously working in an industry that revolves around, you know, content and social media. I study journalism. So it's kind of like one of the biggest principles is like fact checking and making sure that everything that you report on consume use as a resource is like 100 percent true and it's impartial. So considering that social media is among the things we use in this world. I'd like to share with everyone an important principle that we should live by. It's written in the Bible, here in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 31, in the New International Reader's Version. Those who use the things of the world should not become all wrapped up in them. The world as it now exists is passing away. Sorry to jump in, Brother Felmar, but... The Bible doesn't prohibit us from using social media or developing tech. It doesn't per se, but when using social media and all other things in this world, there is a word of caution. What is it? The Bible tells us we should not become all wrapped up in them. So how should we deal with social media, especially when it is being used by others to spread false information? So we should be careful and not careless. Now, I know, JR, you studied communications and journalism, and currently 
you manage and produce digital content for work. So in your own words, how is it that someone could use social media carelessly? There are a lot of ways a person can use social media care carelessly and, and Nat, just jump in if you feel like you have something to add to it. I mean, one of the biggest ways that people can ca get caught up in a messy social media situation is, you know, what they repost or reshare. You know, oftentimes like a user or someone using social media might think that what they're posting is entertaining or hilarious, which is most of us anyways. Like, you know, we think things are heartwarming. It elicits like a really good form of emotion, right? But sometimes it doesn't really occur that, you know, they shared something that's like, you know... Uh, a photoshopped image could have been doctored. Um, and, you know, if someone's gullible, uh, someone might not understand some of these forms of sarcasm or these tamper jokes, and uh, it could lead to some pretty serious deception. So, you know, based on the content you're consuming, you know, the algorithm, which is essentially the pattern of content appearing on your various feeds, uh, it's that's, that kind of stuff is going to show up so much more. Um, for someone like me, if I'm engaging with basketball content often, you know, both, most of you all know that I'm a sports head. <laughs> I love everything that has to do with it. So that'll appear more and more over time. And, and uh, that's that's the truth. You know. Is this why I keep seeing NBA pop up in my Explore page now? It's you, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's probably me. I mean, I, I'm sharing it on my story all the time, interacting with it, right? So it's like, it's you know, it's the same thing. Um, social media, we become desensitized to a lot of things like violence, verbal abuse, um, negative conversation, accurate facts, you know, so many more issues like, but some of the thing, you know, nowadays, some of these platforms are actually taking steps to like filter out some of these deceptive or harmful forms of content. So it's, it's nice seeing that progression over time. What's another guiding principle that should be remembered when using things of this world, like social media? We'll read now in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, this time, verse 12, in the easy-to-read Bible. It says, I am allowed to do anything you say. My answer to this is that not all things are good. Even if it is true that I am allowed to do anything, I will not let anything control me like a slave. Here the Apostle Paul stated, I will not let anything control me like a slave. A slave obeys whomever he recognizes as his master. Now, as Christians, what should we never allow to master us or overwhelm us? Anything that leads to immorality, sin. And this also includes things like gossip, fake news, or slander. We should not have a part in producing these things or sharing them. So now I want to ask Natalie, as a member of the Church of Christ, how do you protect yourself? when it comes to dealing with social media? Honestly, um, like anything I'd rather not hear about, it's in one ear and out the other. I like to think that the best way to get not get wrapped up in what's online is to understand that we're not a part of it or we don't have to be. And while there are so many heated discussions taking place that can be full of toxic energy, you know, the best way to keep it from seeping into your mind and festering is to just keep it away. It's like the saying goes, right? Um, out of sight, out of mind. And like JR already mentioned earlier, uh, the algorithms on most platforms now generally feed you more of what you already click on or spend time viewing. So if you're constantly clicking on negative content, then that's all you'll ever be fed. But if you're spending more time watching uplifting videos, reading inspirational quotes or sharing puppy videos, <laughs> you'll be sent a boatload more of the like. Um, so a great defense is to spend more time on the things you love or that put a smile on your face. This way, those posts that make you feel good will pop into your feed and you don't have to worry about seeing all that negative stuff anymore. I agree with that, Nat. Um, honestly, one of the things I, I love to do is like take a break when I need to. Uh, I remove myself from social media. I unfollow, block, or meet people in pages that don't have a positive effect on me or my life. Um, there's also all the official church sites and pages. You know, following these pages, engaging with the content, and sharing it uh, brings a balance to my social media experience. Um, you know, listen, I know people might not be like, oh, it's not the coolest content or it's not like TikTok trends, 
Um, but every official INC post, piece of content, or official INC page offers, you know, really valuable content and counsel for our lives. Um, it makes a huge difference if we're consuming positive content, and all the more if it's, you know, from our official church pages and sites. Exactly. If we do have questions or want to deepen our understanding on our Bible-based teachings in the Church of Christ, let's access the official pages or websites of the Iglesia Ni Cristo, like iglesianicristo.net, incmedia.org. We also have official accounts of the church on platforms like Facebook or Instagram or YouTube. Or even better, set up an appointment with a minister of the gospel in the church so that our queries will be answered and we can even be prayed for by the minister. This brings us to the end of this episode. JR and Natalie, thank you again for joining us on the show. Want to learn how to curate a feed for happiness? Check out our blog page on incmedia.org. Give us a thumbs up below if you liked this episode. And give us a follow on Instagram at vantagepoint.inc for more content.